Here we go again. It's Badgers. It's Scarlet Knights. Is it going to be any different than the first time? Look, the more I talk on this show, the more I am concerned that I am overly optimistic about this Wisconsin Badgers team. But I think there's good reasons to be optimistic. I think that in this matchup in particular, the Badgers can take some lessons from getting blown out in New Jersey 78 to 56. I looked back and really was shocked at that 22 point blowout. But I think the Badgers have a better chance. They need to improve some things. What are those things that Wisconsin needs to improve on? And what do the Badgers have in their bag in this time around? Inside the Cole Center for Tyler Walls Senior Night. We're going to break it down here. Good morning, and thank you for enjoying it with a six-pack, the Scani Six-Pack, the only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports with you six days a week. I'm your host, Kedrick Stumbrus. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbrus, and follow the podcast at Scani Six-Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. All right, the last time around these two teams played, a 22-point loss. The the loss that... Look, Wisconsin already lost three straight. Lost a game it wasn't supposed to at Nebraska in overtime. But you could, you know, kind of make some excuses in your head there, right? Nobody, nobody in the Big Ten loses at Nebraska. Or wins at Nebraska, rather. You lose at home to Purdue. Well, as I'm recording this, Purdue has just clinched an outright share of the Big Ten title, or an outright Big Ten title. Nobody else in the conference has done that in 17 seasons. Then you went and lost a head-scratcher at Michigan. That was really the first bad loss. Then, take a loss at Rutgers. It's where this all started spiraling, and now, Wisconsin needs to learn some things from the first time around these two teams met. I got three big things Wisconsin needs to improve on from a 22-point blowout loss. 22 points. Still shocking when I go back and pay attention to that number. First thing Wisconsin needs to improve on. AJ Store. AJ Store needs to play better against Rutgers this time around. In the first game, AJ Store finished with 5 of 16 shooting. Not particularly efficient. Something you can probably walk away from and think is fine. But when you dig into it a little bit more, that 5 of 16 shooting was bad. And, and you have to look back and remember, AJ Store took some bad shots in that game. Some bad threes. AJ Store shot four three-point attempts in the first half. This was during the stretch where I started hammering, hey, AJ Store has not been a great three-point shooter lately. Hammered that on the show, kind of into submission until he has since, you know, kind of kind of proven me wrong, got back into his groove a little bit. But in the first half of that game against Rutgers, AJ Store shot four three pointers and missed four three pointers. He was five of twelve from the field in the second half. Well, if you're you're keeping track here, five of sixteen on the game means that. AJ Store was 0 for 4 in the second half. And it wasn't because he was chucking up threes trying to get the Badgers to catch up in that one. Only shot one three in the second half. The other three shots came from inside the arc. Missed all of them. That's real tough. That's a real tough AJ Store game. And Wisconsin needs better from him, needs better shot selection from AJ Store. Cannot be chucking up contested threes. Cannot be chucking up early shot clock threes. Wisconsin needs better from AJ Store as its leading scorer if it is going to win this game. Granted, AJ Store getting in the paint against that Rutgers defense, probably pretty difficult. Probably pretty difficult when Rutgers has Cliff Amore at center. And if you want to look for a bigger breakdown of this Rutgers roster, some of the players on it, you can listen back to our episode that uh, we did with the Scarlet Faithfuls, Aaron Brightman, leading up to the first game Wisconsin played at Rutgers this season. Uh, but Cliff Amore, the all Big Ten defensive standout, blocks a ton, a ton, a ton of shots. And against Wisconsin, 
the first time around absolutely went off, which leads to the second thing Wisconsin needs to do better in this rematch with the Rutgers Scarlet Knights is that it needs to contain Clifford Amori. You're not going to stop him. Wisconsin, frankly, doesn't have the bodies to stop Cliff Amori. And I think that became evident the first go around. But Cliff Amori had eight blocks in that first game against Wisconsin, an absurd number. And not just that he went off early and came back down to earth in the second half. No, he had four blocks in each half against the batters. Cliff Amori posted 13 points on six of 11 shooting. Only two, only two free throws. So he did all of his damage there. Dang near posted a triple double with blocks, 13 points, 13 rebounds, eight blocks, only one turnover and an assist to boot. Need to contain Cliff Amore. Frankly, that's one of the big keys to this game against this Rutgers team. Last time out, Rutgers lost to Nebraska 67 56 inside Pinnacle Bank Arena in Lincoln. Cliff Amore only got three shot attempts up for six points and finished with zero blocks. It is huge to contain Cliff Amore down low. And look, Nebraska has a center that allowed them to be able to do it. Rink, Rink Mast has tied up Zach Eady down low for crying out loud, right? Th this is a maybe not as heralded as he should be center, although I'd have to look back at his, his numbers through throughout the whole season there in Nebraska. but. Containing Cliff Amore is going to be big. We talked about on yesterday's show. Some of the trouble Wisconsin has had as of late can be tied back to foul trouble in the front court, whether that is with Stephen Crowell. A lot of time this season it's been with Stephen Crowell or with Tyler Wall. Wisconsin is not winning games when those, when either one of those two guys get into foul trouble. Wisconsin needs Stephen Crowell on this floor unlike he was able to stay on the floor against Illinois. Against Illinois, at the very least, and Greg Gard said this as well, we talked about this on yesterday's episode, against Illinois, being able to go small was probably a boon to Wisconsin's defense while having Stephen Crowell would have been better on offense. With Cliff Mori in the lineup, Wisconsin really can't afford to go small ball a whole bunch. It's too tough with that big center down low that Wisconsin needs to hang with. Wisconsin needs Stephen Crowell in this game. Need him for his offense and for his defense. Need him to be able to. You need somebody who can try to get shots around one of the best rim protectors in the Big Ten, one of the best rim protectors in the country in Cliff Mori. Wisconsin absolutely needs to contain him. And. Part of that dates back, goes back to the first point I was making about AJ Store needing to play better in this game. I have a hard time believing, and I'd have to go back and look at all, all the shots, and yeah, I, I probably will. I have a hard time believing that some of AJ Store's shooting troubles in that game were not because of Cliff Amori. You know, changing shot angles, affecting AJ Store's shots, affecting AJ Store's willingness and ability to drive into the paint against Rutgers the first time around in Piscataway. So Wisconsin needs some, you know, help on the offense, boxing out Cliff Mori. trying to do what Wisconsin would like to do around the paint, getting points in the post with Tyler Wall and Stephen Crowell is going to be difficult because Wisconsin offense plays much, much, much better when it is able to do so, when it is able to play through its front court and when AJ store is not settling for three pointers, all of that can only be done. If the Badgers can find some way to contain Cliff Mori, which is clearly a key to beating this Rutgers Scarlet Knights team. And of course, the simplest thing that makes any offense click is limiting turnovers. And yeah, th this is a very simplistic thing to look back on. But Wisconsin has one of the best point guards in, in the Big Ten, at least in terms of protecting the ball, taking care of the ball. Chucky Hepburn has one of the best assist-to-turnover ratios in the history of the Wisconsin Badgers basketball program. The last time around, though, this Wisconsin basketball team did not fare very well in the preventing turnovers category, more turnovers than assists. 
Wisconsin had 12 turnovers to its seven assists. Meanwhile, Wisconsin didn't defend the best, letting Rutgers rack up 18 assists to its seven turnovers. Chucky Hepburn individually, two turnovers, three assists, not terrible. But Wisconsin as a team really, really struggled. At least in the first 20 minutes of that game. Of those 12 turnovers, 11 of them for Wisconsin were in the first half. If you think back to that game, Wisconsin turned over the ball three times on its first three possessions. And I believe turned over the ball again another two or three possessions later. Really four quick turnovers in quick succession. Rutgers had 15 points off of Wisconsin's turnovers in that last game. If Wisconsin is going to be able to hang in this one with Rutgers, it's going to require limiting those turnovers, something Wisconsin was able to do early, or Wisconsin was able to do late, but needs to do early. Why is it so important for Wisconsin to do that early? Besides the obvious if you don't want to have 11 turnovers in the, in the half. It's a pretty dang good reason. Pretty dang good reason that I found when looking at the numbers for this Rutgers Scarlet Knights team. I'm going to give you that reason right after we talk to you about our friends over at TickPick because TickPick is where I get tickets to any live sporting event, concert, comedy show that I would like to go to. And if you would like to go to uh, on this upcoming Thursday evening, a, a, a Tyler Wall senior night celebration, the, the final home game of this Wisconsin basketball season. You should, you should get your tickets on TickPick because TickPick does not charge fees. No fees on tickets on TickPick ever. When you are going to download the TickPick app, that's T-I-C-K-P-I-C-K. No fees, and you will always get the best price on TickPick, the best deal. You can get tickets for this Rutgers Scarlet Knights game as they visit the Kohl Center, starting at 8 bucks on TickPick. Look, you even got some great lower bowl seats for... Around 40 bucks should be an excellent, excellent night at the Kohl Center. And I'm going to save you 10 bucks on your first order while, while I'm at it, while you're getting those tickets on TickPick, paying no fees, no service fees, no delivery fees, none of that nonsense. Save 10 bucks on your first order while you're at it by clicking my link in the podcast description or in the YouTube description. Just click that link, save 10 bucks on your first order and never pay service or delivery fees on tickets ever again. Coming up this week on the show. Oh, my goodness. Do we have things to talk about this week on the show? Uh, tomorrow, we're going to be checking in with Noah Clark of 1070 The Game in Madison. You know, in intermission, post-game, voice of the Wisconsin Badgers. As we walk through Wisconsin women's hockey, going to try to talk some bracketology, where the Badgers are going to fall in, in the pecking order for this upcoming NCAA tournament, because they will be making the NCAA tournament. Uh, and previewing Wisconsin's matchup this weekend with Minnesota Golden Gophers in the semifinals of the WCHA final faceoff and a potential fifth game also with the Ohio State Buckeyes in the championship for the conference tournament. Should be an awesome, awesome, awesome weekend. The Badgers coming off of a sweep of the St. Thomas Tommies. We'll, we'll be breaking all that down, uh, of course, then on Friday. We'll have an episode in your feed. Uh, recapping Wisconsin's hopefully win on senior night against the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. And then Saturday, a preview episode as Wisconsin visits Purdue for its senior night. But I, I mentioned at the tail end of the first half there that Wisconsin taking care of the ball early is going to, going to be a key and not just taking care of the ball generally, because of course that's a key, but taking care of the ball early is a key because Wisconsin has a better chance against Rutgers this time around for a few reasons, for a handful of reasons, really. The first of which is that Wisconsin let itself fall down very quickly, very early last time out. There is a little bit of a statistical aberration to that. And if Wisconsin doesn't do that again, they could put themselves in the position where they could build a lead early and really take it to Rutgers. Uh, Rutgers, according according to uh, a listener of Aaron Brightman's over on the Scarlet Faithful, he threw, he threw this out uh, on a show the other day, 
so that Rutgers has trailed by double digits in 13 of its games this season. Rutgers is typically letting teams get up on it early, often, and big. If Wisconsin can take control early, it's going to be huge for, for Wisconsin in this game. Because frankly, I am a little bit, you know, qu questioning what Rutgers' motivation in this game is going to be, which brings me to point number two. Rutgers doesn't have anything to play for. Maybe, maybe this team has an NIT berth on the line, given the new NIT rules on shutting out mid-majors mid from, from the NIT. Maybe a Rutgers sneaks into the NIT. But Rutgers just clinched its first losing season in the Big Ten in five years. Not a great year for Rutgers. And they've been kind of unraveling down the stretch, too. Wisconsin, of course, only two wins in its last, what is it now, eight games? Two in its last nine, I think, actually. Ugh. God, so rough. Uh, but Rutgers is only one for its last five. And that was after running up a, a four-game winning streak just as Jeremiah Williams was coming into the lineup. Jeremiah Williams, of course, missed basically all of last season at Iowa State, where he transferred to with uh, a season-ending injury. He then transfers into Rutgers, into Piscataway. He has to sit for part of the season due to a gambling suspension. They also didn't think he was going to be able to play all year because of the restrictions on two-time transfers. Now the two-time tra transfer restrictions are totally gone. He's he's set to play and, you know, he's out there doing stuff. Has had, I mean, still putting up double-digit points in either every or dang near every game that he's played in. I believe it's dang near every game that he's played in uh, for Rutgers. But for as well as it was going for Rutgers for a while there, it slipped away from them. And these motivation questions do mean things in sports, uh, particularly at the higher levels of sports. Wisconsin still has a lot, a lot, a lot in front of it. A lot of reason to get things right. A lot of reason to play with intensity. It's going to the NCAA tournament. It doesn't want to fall any further than this six. It probably is right now in terms of seeding. It's trying to play for a double bye in the NCAA turn or in the Big Ten tournament, rather. Wisconsin has a lot in front of it. Plus, oh, sorry about that as my phone goes off in the background. Plus, Wisconsin probably has a scheduled loss having to play at Purdue's senior night on Sunday. Zach Eadie's senior night. Yeah, the Boilermakers are going to come out jumping for that one. It, that is a hot ticket on TickPick. I think just shy of $300 to get in the door, by the way. But if you want to go, uh, you can save 10 bucks in our first order by clicking my link in the podcast description. Wisconsin has a lot of reason to bring intensity in this game. Rutgers, uh, I, I am not so sure. One of the places Rutgers is struggling to bring that intensity right now is on its defense, which brings me to point three about why I think Wisconsin might face a better chance against the Rutgers Scarlet Knights the second time around. Rutgers defense was its calling card for, for most of this season. It, it has not been nearly as good as it has been in recent weeks. Um, it, it is slipping quite a bit since it, it has started this losing stretch. It is kind of the reason Rutgers is losing games. It, it is struggling to bring that intensity uh, I, I think no, Noah Fernandi has received a lot of criticism for his de defensive efforts as a reserve guard for, for Rutgers. Derek Simpson isn't shooting as well, and his sophomore is probably going to struggle to defend. Jamichael Davis is very young, also in the guard position. And maybe he's going to struggle to defend some of these offensive pieces in the backcourt that Wisconsin has. It's also just harder to play that intense defense when you're playing on the road, when you don't have the crowd behind you. One of the, one of these questions about being able to, I, I mean, get up for this game. You got to travel all the way across the country. You're going to play Wisconsin, and then you got to snap all the way back. I'm guessing, actually, I wonder if Rutgers, because they played, uh, no, I guess they did go back to Piscataway. So, so since Sunday, Rutgers had to leave Nebraska where it played, probably go back to New Jersey, 
play this game in Madison on Thursday, and then it's going to run back for its its own senior night against Ohio State on Sunday. It's a lot of travel. And yeah, these East Coast teams, you know, it's just kind of kind of part of the deal with with their travel situation there. But Scott may have caught Rutgers in, in a, you know, decent stretch of games that it has to travel for right now. And being able to bring intensity off of that is going to be difficult. But Rutgers defense absolutely slipping, slipping as of late. It's not the the juggernaut that it was uh, earlier in the year. If Wisconsin can take advantage of that, that's going to be pretty big. One of the reasons Rutgers defense is slipping, which brings me to reason number four why I think Wisconsin has a better chance in this game, is the availability of Mwat Mag. On the preview episode of the first time I talked about uh, Rutgers Wisconsin, we did it with Aaron Brightman of the Scarlet Faithful. I asked him who I thought Rutgers' best on-ball defender was. And we both sat and talked and raved about the defense, on-ball or not, of Mawat Mag. Uh, a, a phenomenal defender for Rutgers. A excellent senior wing who has been in and out of the lineup as of late and right now seemingly out. Seems that Rutgers head coach Steve Peichel has no idea whether or not that he is going to be available to play at Wisconsin. I assume on the day you're probably listening to this on Wednesday, we, we will learn whether or not Moat Mag is traveling with the team from New Jersey to Wisconsin. But if he is not available to play, that, that is a huge boon to Wisconsin. A huge boon also because Wisconsin is getting some some personnel back of its own, which brings me to final reason number five why I believe Wisconsin has a better chance of winning this game than it did in Piscataway. Wisconsin's got John Blackwell back. That game against Rutgers was the second game Wisconsin did not have either Kamari McGee or John Blackwell. Now, do I think Kamari McGee is going to be available for this one? I'm going to guess probably not. I've again, that is nothing more than a guess, but we have not heard anything otherwise. But John Blackwell being back should be huge. And look, all the minutes that John Blackwell played against Illinois are indicative of just how much Greg Gard trusts him. And yes, part of that was that Wisconsin was forced to go to him because of Stephen Crowell's foul trouble. But Greg Gard prepared a game plan of going to that small ball lineup, prepared a game plan of highlighting John Blackwell in the lineup. Of course, John Blackwell fouled out of that game, and John Blackwell is probably not going to be as effective against a Cliff Amore from Rutgers. But he brings an element that this team did not have last time around and is huge considering Wisconsin needs anything and everything that it did not have the last time around in this matchup in which it lost by 22 points. Badgers getting John Blackwell back should be big for this team. And if it isn't, well, maybe one of the other multitude of things that went wrong last time these two teams played uh will will in fact be big for this team regardless uh so keep an eye on all things badgers by by listening to the scotty six-pack podcast here on your podcast platform of choice or by watching on youtube youtube.com slash at scotty six-pack while you are here i think leave some nice review on apple podcasts on spotify five stars kind comments really helps the show you can also while you're watching on youtube smash that subscribe button hit the like and follow me, your host, Kedrick Stumbrus, over on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbrus, and follow the podcast at Scotty Six Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. We'll be back to talk tomorrow, all things Wisconsin women's hockey. Talk some more hoops through the weekend. Then we're into it. Conference tournaments already starting. If, if you are interested in the nitty-gritty of all kinds of conference tournaments, as uh, UW-Milwaukee just secured a spot in the Horizon League quarterfinals, it's going to head up to Green Bay. And that's in-state rivalry game should be an excellent one. Uh, I, I'm talking all things uh, NCAA basketball conference, conference tournaments on the website, formerly known as Twitter these days. So follow me there. We'll talk Big Ten tournament. Also got some really awesome stuff. Wisconsin hosting its pro day next week. Spring football practice right around the corner. That's why you got to stay tuned here to the Scotty Six Pack as we talk all things Wisconsin sports with you six days a week. 
Till we talk to you next on Wisconsin.